everybody. I think y'all can hear me, but let me know. Good morning, good morning, everybody. I think it's going live. But if you can hear me, please let me know in a comment or something. Say yes to my so we can hear you. Or somebody text me and say, yes, we can hear you. Somebody, anybody. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Again, if y'all can hear me, somebody send me a text. Um, somebody send me a text saying that you can hear me. <clears throat> good morning, good, good morning. Hey, Cousin Lynn, you can hear me? Cousin Lynn? I see Cousin Lynn logged on. Cousin Lynn, let me know. Send me a text, somebody, and say you can hear me. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Yes, okay, Cousin Lynn says she can hear me, y'all. All right. Good morning and happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. It is Mother's Day. First of all, in this uh, new year, we're already um, at Mother's Day. We're already in May. So, oh my God, um, things are just, seems like flying by. Amen, amen. Um, but happy Mother's Day to every, every just amazing woman out there. Happy Mother's Day to you. Hats off to you. Kudos to you. Happy Mother's Day. Um, a special Happy Mother's Day to, if you know me, I have a favorite girl in the world. Her name is Quethlin Holden. So a special Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Quethlin Holden, and my mommy-in-law, Miss um, uh, Kim, Kim Easley. Um, that just welcomed me with open arms about three years ago. That's how long we've been married. Uh, me and myself and Jeff have been married. So happy Mother's Day to her. Also a special happy Mother's Day to the mom of our first family, um, Mrs. Ella Richburg. Happy mom, happy Mother's Day to you and to our um, beloved Miss Blanton, who is the mommy of our pastor Kevin Blanton. Uh, happy Mother's Day to you all. Happy Mother's Day to the these wonderful women that I get to go to church with in Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. Happy Mother's Day to you all. For years and years and years, whether you know it or not, I have been sitting back and I take notes, I take lessons, I watch, I observe, and just how um, amazing each and every one of you are, how you... Um, operating your households and how you mother your children by um, listening and inquiring of, of the Holy Spirit. And, and it's amazing to watch. I, again, I've been observing, whether you know it or not, I've been observing, and, and you all are wonderful. So a special shout out to all of the, the mommies of Pursuit for His Presence Ministries, and um, just Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Happy Mother's Day to all of the amazing women. Happy Mother's Day to all of the amazing women, even those that are tuning in now, um, connected to this ministry or not. Just Happy Mother's Day to you. You have, you have a job. Amen. <laughs> I did some babysitting about two Saturdays ago. Oh my Lord. And although I had a wonderful time, had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. Um, I, I was, you know, ready for, for a nap. I definitely was. It was, I was ready to get home and get in the bed. You all have a, you all have, I don't want to say a hard job, but, um, mommies, mommies are, are just, are just wonderful and doing it. Okay. Um, working mommies, all of you all, y'all just wonderful. I don't know how you do it. I ask the Lord every day, like, what am I going to do when me and Jeff have kids? <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, um, again, happy mother's day, everybody. Happy mother's day. We're going to jump right into the word on today. We're going to jump into prayer and, um, the Lord highlighted something for me and I promise I'm not going to be before you all long because I have dinner to make a man that I have not started on. So no judgment, but, um, um, 
the Lord reminded me of something today um, as I was, you know, just preparing for, for the for the message today. Um, good morning, um, E.P. Shonda, and good morning, uh, Dr. Lori, beautiful Lori. Lori, I haven't seen your pretty face in a minute. I may have to randomly FaceTime you this week, but good morning. <laughs> um, so the Lord reminded me um, of something uh, as I was getting ready and prepared for today's message. And he reminded me of a word, and I don't know if it was through myself or if it was through Pastor Kendra, but he reminded me of a time when he revealed that a lot of times Mother's Day is filled with sorrow. It's filled with sorrow because, it, and it's filled with sorrow for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's filled with sorrow because some have mommies that are not necessarily here on earth, but are in heaven now. Um, and then you have, and, and that can be a, your biological mom or just a mom that, a, a person that raised you, your guardian um, that raised you. That um, woman may not be here on earth anymore and, and she's in heaven. And then you also have, uh, what he revealed to me is that people have memories of sorrow during this time because they are reminded of all of the things, or it really is the enemy that's doing it. It's causing all of the remembrance and the memories of, of what their mother lacked, right? Of what they felt like they missed out on. And so Mother's Day, sh although should be a great day of celebration for everybody, the enemy tries to manipulate today to remind us of all of these painful memories of, again, my, um, your, your mother not being here, earthly here, but being in heaven and, and trying to use that to cause you pain. Or um, memories of your mom, um, whether she's in heaven or not, and her shortcomings to you um, during your childhood. And, and what the Lord reminded me to remind us on today is that we, we, we need to really allow this, this Mother's Day, if that is something that you're struggling with, to be the last Mother's Day that we're struggling with that. As even right now, if the enemy has just been kind of tormenting you about this Mother's Day, let's make a decision this moment at 10, 10 a.m. to turn that around, to arrest those thoughts, to take your thoughts into captivity under the obedience of Christ, according to 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 and to rebuke every single thought about your mom or about your guardian that was not, that's not lovely, that's not pleasing, that's not praiseworthy, and all the things that are mapped out in Philippians um, 4, I believe it's 6 through 8. Uh, any thought about your mom that doesn't fit into, or your, again, guardian, whoever took, whatever woman took care of you, any thoughts that do not fit the description of what is laid out in Philippians 4, 6 through 8, be ready and willing to let go of that this Mother's Day. Be ready to, to, to be done with that once and for all. Because what the Lord is saying is that it shouldn't be a day where we, we sit with painful memories and sorrows and all those things. That shouldn't be what we do today. Um, he wants this to be a day of celebration. And even if it's a situation where you can't physically celebrate the person that was a mom to you, that you could look upon someone around you and just celebrate them for being a mother or a mother or a mother figure, um, you can even celebrate them. So um, he reminded me to remind us that this is not supposed to be a day of sorrow and that this is not supposed to be a day where we sit in the past, but that this is supposed to be a day of celebration and it doesn't take away from what has occurred, but let's be done with it. Let's, let's move on. Let's choose. Let's make a choice to make this a day of, of, of celebration. Amen. Amen. So he reminded me and that reminder was for all of us. He reminded me so that I could remind us. Amen. Amen. So let's go to God in prayer and then we will move into giving and then we're going to move into the word and then I'm going to be done because I told y'all I have Mother's Day. I was tasked with a dish for Mother's Day dinner and who has not made that dish yet? 
raise your hand. That would be me. So we're going to move into prayer. We're going to move into offering. We're going to move into the word. And then we're going to we're gonna be done. We're going to be out of here. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. So, Lord, we just bless you and we honor you and we glorify you for this day. We thank you, God, for being wonderful. We thank you, God, for being marvelous. We thank you, God, for being um, the great, great, just God that you are to us. The word of God calls you. The word of the word of God refers to you in the Hebrew as the multi-breasted one, meaning that you are our source of supply, that in you we can find um, our guardian, our 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 father. We can find a good parent in you, God, because you are our source of supply. You are our resource. So first and foremost, we praise you, God. We praise you for your unfailing love. We praise you for your unfailing kindness. We praise you for your unfailing mercy. We praise you for your unfailing faithfulness to us that you are a God that never fails. So we thank you that we serve of God. We can boldly declare and we can boldly decree that I serve a God that does not fail. We serve a God that does not fail. So we worship you, God, for that. And we bless you and we honor you and we glorify you on today for that. Lord, we worship you and we thank you. Lord, I did just decree and declare over everyone that is listening, that is tuning in to this particular broadcast on this Mother's Day, I just decree and declare over your heart that if there's any stony parts of your heart, that your heart becomes tender and pliable, that it obeys the decrees and regulations of the Lord, that when the Lord says on today to be done with sorrow, to be done with regret, to be done with guilt, to be done with condemnation, and to truly believe the love of God in Christ Jesus for you, that you receive that truth on today, that you receive that revelation, that your heart takes it in, that your heart is good soil so that the word of God and the love of God can just saturate your heart in the name of Jesus so that whatever you were dealing with, whatever painful memories and past that you were dealing with before this moment can now be eradicated on your behalf in the name of Jesus because your heart is pliable, because your heart is soft, because your heart is tender, because your heart is turned away from the things of the enemy and turned towards God. Because on today, on May 14th, on this Mother's Day, you decree and declare and you make a sound decision that your heart is for God, that your heart is not going to be toiled with or manipulated with by the enemy, by the works and the plans and the plots of the enemy. Your heart is not going to be turned to and fro following whatever doctrine is trendy at the moment, but that your heart will be turned and sold out completely to God, your father, completely to God, who is your resource, completely to God, who is your El Shaddai, completely to God, completely to Yahweh, completely to uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, that your heart will be turned away from the things of the world and that it would radiate towards God, that it would radiate in the presence of God, that your heart would radiate that your heart would radiate and that it would beat and respond to the love of God on today that any guilt that the enemy has really been trying to push towards you as of today, leading up to Mother's Day, that it is done in the name of Jesus. Because that at any time that you entertain this guilt, entertain this condemnation, and contain this regret, any time that you entertain this, whether we know we did it unwillingly or willingly, what we were making a decision to do was to turn toward the enemy, was to turn our hearts to the enemy, to entertain his plan and his plans and his ploys. But on today, on this Mother's Day, May 14th, make a decision that you're turning your heart to radiate for God, that you're turning your heart to experience the love of God for you that is in Christ Jesus, that you are allowing God to overtake you and overwhelm you with his promises on today. And what I am hearing the Lord say that not only is he overwhelming you with his love, he's overwhelming you with his promises. He's overwhelming you with 
with his visions. He's overwhelming you with knowledge about his will, that his overwhelming love is for you. So I decree and declare on today that where the enemy had, be, had built stones in your heart, where the enemy was putting down rocky things in your heart that was uh, preventing the love of God to get through and to get to, I decree and declare that today is the last day. I decree and declare that the enemy's, um, the enemy's, um, the enemy taking up residence in your heart that today is his eviction notice that he must leave you he must flee you he must flee your mind he must flee your will he must flee your emotions that your emotions will not be be tossed to and fro because now your heart is turned towards God in the name of Jesus that your heart is turned towards God in the name of Jesus and I just keep hearing him say that today that your heart is turned towards God in the name of Jesus. And you might say, well, my heart, I'm saved. So my heart is turned towards God. I read the word. So my heart is turned towards God. I go to church every Wednesday and Sunday. My heart is turned towards God. I'm on the usher board. I'm on the, I'm on the finance committee. I'm on the ministerial staff. I'm on the deacon staff. My heart is turned towards God. I serve in the youth community, in the youth ministry. My heart is turned towards God. I'm on the prayer team. My heart is turned towards God. You, you might be saying that right now, but what the Lord is showing me is that, that your heart being turned towards God um, has a fruit, should have a certain fruit. And that fruit being that guilt, shame, and condemnation and regret can sit with you no longer. Because if we allow guilt, shame, regret, and condemnation to sit with us, what we are doing is actually turning our hearts towards the enemy and we don't even know it. It's like, it's like I see um, a person and I see, um, you know, the angel on one side and, and the devil sitting on the other side, kind of how you see in illustrations and cartoons. And rather than us tuning into what the Lord is saying, we're lending an ear to what the enemy is saying. And that is us making a decision to turn our hearts the wrong way. But he's saying on today, Guilt, shame, condemnation, and regret. Make a decision to be done with that. Make a decision to not entertain that any longer and turn your heart towards God so that it radiates for God because it can't radiate. It can't receive. It can't do what it was made to do if it's filled with stones, if it's filled with stony ground. Those stones being guilt, shame, regret, and condemnation. So I don't know who I'm talking to on today. I don't know who possibly was sitting with um, guilt, shame, and condemnation, and it has something to do with, with Mother's Day today. So I don't know who exactly was sitting with that, who the enemy was trying to get you since you woke up this morning to entertain that. But the Lord is saying, don't do that. If you do that, it's not, it's not just you entertaining thoughts from the enemy. It's you turning your heart toward, towards his plots, his plans, his ploys, and his trickery. And you don't even know it. So be done with that today and turn your heart towards God. Amen. Amen. And we just, um, we just decree and declare over this nation, the United States of America and over every single political figure and leader and pastor and community leader in these United States, that they have a heart for God, that they, they obey the decrees and the regulations of the Lord. I declare Psalm 91 over every single household that is connected to this ministry, that you all dwell in the secret place of the most high. You rest and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This we declare about the Lord. You alone, He alone is your refuge, your fortress, and your place of safety. He is your God, and we trust Him. He's rescued you from every trap, and He's protected you from every single disease. Everybody in your house has long life. Everybody in your household has this gift of salvation. Everybody in your household will be buried in a good old age. Everybody in your household um, has been given a health and a cure and that health and cure is the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody in your household is of sound mind in the name of Jesus. And I'm also hearing Isaiah, I'm hearing Isaiah 32 and 18, that your house and your household is a peaceful, safe dwelling place for you because you are God's people. Amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. Something came to my and in Jesus' name we we decree and declare amen. Something came to my mind. I forgot to give um honor to our pastors. Lord, forgive me, our pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. You, you know my motto. I don't play about my pastors now. I love them. I love them dearly. Thank you all for the honor to be able to bring the word on on this on this uh Mother's Day. Amen, amen. So Let's uh, go into offering. Um, something that the Lord shared with me um, in regards to our offering message for today is, let me get to it. It's 2 Corinthians 9. And it's, um, it's a scripture that I particularly love to refer to. Is it 9? Yes, it is. I'm, my apologies. Yes. Second Corinthians nine It's a scripture. I say it so much just for remembrance that I, I need to put my eyes on it more, but I just say it so much for remembrance when I'm just doing my, my daily decrees and, and, and declarations. But, um, something that he brought to my remembrance for today's offering is second Corinthians nine starting at verse six. And, and here's how that reads. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. <clears throat> and don't do it reluctantly or in response to, to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God loves a, and God will generously provide all you need and you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. In my Bible, I have, I have written myself and Jeff's name under that with the, with an arrow pointing to us. I do that throughout my Bible when I come across a promise that, you know, maybe I didn't know was there or maybe that I needed or whatever. I draw an arrow and I put me and Jeff, I put our names in, in that particular part of the, the scripture. And I draw an arrow to us, meaning that that pertains to us. So verse eight, I'm going to read it again. And God will generously provide all you need and you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Moving, moving on as the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. That particular uh, part of scripture is referring to Psalm 112. Psalm 112 is the profile of a prosperous believer. So if that's something you hadn't read before, go put your eyes on it. Okay. Okay. Moving on to verse 10. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. <clears throat> In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great, a, a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So let's sum that up. So again, we're talking about the offer message on today. That scripture, that's 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 through 11. Um, verses 6 through 11 um, is the scripture he gave me for today's offering. I witnessed a conversation recently about um, a believer not believing in tithing um, because tithing was uh, uh, under the law according to them. And so they were saying that's, that was their reason for not tithing. It's of the law. We're done with the law. The word, the word does say that we have a better covenant. The word does say that, but that we're done with the law. Well, what we should know is that tithing or the act of honoring God with your giving came before the law. Um, and it is found in the book of Genesis. I'm, my apologies. I should have had that reference for you. Let me look it up really quickly. Um, this is when um, Abraham tithes to Melchizedek. Okay. And so um, that act, the act of honoring God um, with your giving actually came um before the law is in Genesis 14 is what it says here. So uh, when I was witnessing that and I thought to myself, wow, you know, if, if only they had the revelation that um, you honor God with your giving and you honor God with your giving because he blessed you first to give. This isn't a situation where you by the works of your hands and by your own merit um, um, generated an income and then through that, you then have to like, oh, for my income, let me go ahead and give God what belongs to him. Here you go, Jesus. Yeah. 
oh, I've been working all week and then I got bills to pay, but here's your part, Jesus. Like as if you blessed yourself. No, 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 no. Before you ever had a job, before you ever thought of having a job, before you even arrived here on this on this planet Earth, the Lord blessed you to be a blessing. And it's all lined out here in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. And if you read down to 15, it's, it's actually just a great chapter in general because those chapters 8 and 9 is Paul commissioning to the church of Corinth and, and teaching them about what it means to give. When you are giving, when you are tithing, let's, let's start there. When you are tithing, what you are doing is that is an honor. It's, it's an honor just like you worshiping God with the fruit of your lips. It is an honor to tithe because you're honoring God for him blessing you. And you had nothing to do with that. There's nothing that you did for God to bless you. You are his child. And by way of you being his child, he wants to give you things. He wants to bless you um, inside out on every level with eternal life, with salvation, with prosperity, with all the those things. And then when it comes to sowing seed or offering many above and beyond your tithe, you get to do that, right? Because according to 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11, you were blessed. The, 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 the profile of a prosperous Christian, of, of a prosperous Christian, excuse me, says that they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds are remembered forever. So whether you're giving to a particular fund at your church or the particular fund of a ministry that you glean from, or whether you're giving to another believer, though your profile as a believer says that you were blessed to share freely and give generously. So those are the things that you should keep in remembrance when it comes to um, your, when it comes to money and God and your giving, your tithing, your offering is that you were placed by God in a position to do these things. And why were you placed in a position to do that? For several reasons. Number one, you doing that, you making him Lord of your finances by honoring him gives him the space. And it gives him the permission to continue to move supernaturally in your life. You continue to sow the natural things, you're going to get natural natural results. Um, if for you, investing is, 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 is the only thing that you need to do as far as your finances are concerned, then what you yield from your investing will continue to be um, on the natural side of things. But if investing is your thing and then you also first and foremost invest in the kingdom of God by honoring him with your finances, then you not only, you don't restrain yourself to just the natural harvest of money. You then allow God to come in and bring about supernatural harvest with your money. Amen. So when it comes to tithing, when it comes to sowing, when it comes to offering, th this scripture right here, 2 Corinthians 9, is a good place of reference. And it's a good place of, of, of reference because... Um, it's a good place of reference because it describes you as a believer. Amen. It describes you and it describes the position that you've been given to be blessed, to bless. Amen. Amen. So again, that scripture is um, 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 through 11. And then also um, we're going to move into the giving. So if you want to give, um, you can search for us on Pursuit for Sorry, on Givelify. Sorry. So there's an app called Givelify. Um, and you can search for Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. We're going to pop right up when you search for that. Um, you can also give through Cash App, and that's dollar sign P4HP, and that's through Cash App. And then also we have a text to give, and that number is 615 492 8855. Okay. Again, the text to give number is 615-492-8855. Um, you text your amount to that number and then follow the prompts from there. And then also, we do have a P.O. Box, um, P.O. Box 130, Weiss Creek Pike, um, 37189, in case you want to mail checks or money orders or anything like that. Amen. Amen. So let's pray over your offering and then we'll jump into the word. So Lord, we bless you um, for, we bless you, God, because you have made us to be a blessing. Amen. You've made us to be a blessing so that we may be
be a blessing to those in our sphere of authority and realm of influence so that we may invest in the kingdom of God so that we may bring in 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 souls um all for your glory that is why we are blessed not to hoard it not to keep it um not to penny pinch it but we are blessed to be a blessing to others so we thank you God for loving us so much that we didn't have to earn the position of being a of being a blessing but you gave it to us at the very creation of man you gave it to us by just blessing us um as soon as you as you formed man you blessed us so we thank you god for that now lord we decree and declare over the seed that we are sowing right now that um as we sow that it comes back to us um a hundredfold that you have given us the power to get wealth according to me according to Deuteronomy 8 that you multiply us a thousand times according to Deuteronomy 1 and 11 that we um share freely and give generously to the poor that we can confidently trust in you to take care of us according to Psalm 112 and 3 that um you give seed to the sower and bread for food, according to 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. So we thank you, Father God, that as we give, it is given back to us and it is immeasurable, shaken down, pressed together and running over. And it's in Jesus name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's jump right into our word. Y'all, I'm going to take a sip of water here. Just a sip of water there. Amen. All right. So we're going to jump into the word. And the word or the title for the word today is you can do all things through love. Amen. Amen. You can do all things through love. So um, as I was spending some time with the Lord this weekend, um, he started to show me what today's word was going to be about. Wasn't asking him about today's word. I was just trying to spend time kind of getting myself together. Amen. If we're just being honest spiritually. But he started to pour into me what today's word was going to be about. And this is what he spoke. He said, my people need to know that I am a covenant keeping God. I keep my promises. My promises are backed by my word. My word is held together by my love. I keep my covenant because my love never fails. If you are struggling in this season, re-examine my love for you. This is the Lord speaking prophetically to me this weekend. If you are not propelling in the promises, reflect on my love. It seems simple to you, but remember who is truly the wisest. I am. So, he was saying the study of love and the reflection of my love for you seems um, simple because you're standing for all these promises and promise of healing, promise of prosperity, promise of a successful business, promise of, you know, children, promise of a marriage, you know, all a spouse, all these things. So he's saying that to you, um, studying my love for you is, is, is too simple. It's not complex enough to put you in position for these promises. But then he goes on to say, but remember his true, who is truly wisest between you and I, I am, says the Lord. And the, I am that he showed me in this word is the, I am that appeared when Moses went to the Lord saying, who am I going to tell, who, who am I going to tell Pharaoh sent me? Who, who on, on whose behalf is he going to listen to little uh, up to me which is what Moses was saying and the Lord said you tell him I am sent you I am is who sent you so when he said in his prophetic word who is truly who is truly the wisest I am that's the that's who he's talking about okay all right so re-examine my love the children of Israel made what should have been a quick detour their entire life they defined their destination by their current position and concluded they would never have the promise they didn't believe in my word because they didn't believe in my love it is my love for you that will get you to the other side start to believe i love you and then you will experience it because the word of god says that we know and we believe the love of god we experience the love of god amen amen 
And that concludes the prophetic word that he gave me. So, um, as I was spending time with the with the Lord this weekend, there's a song that's on a playlist, um, one of my, my Apple playlists, a worship song that I've been having on replay for weeks now. And the words of that song um, is by Elevation Worship. And the words of that song say, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who never fails. He will never fail. And it just, and that's what's been playing in my mind. The melody of that has been playing in my mind all weekend. And so that's what the Lord started out with before he gave me this prophetic word, because I'm trying to study the word. I don't know if this happens to you all, but I'm trying to study the word. I'm trying to do my devotion. I'm trying, you know, and the Lord is pointing my attention elsewhere. Like put that down. I need you to look at something else here. Right? So that's how the, the prophetic word came about, um, this weekend. But what he, he pointed out to me was that you can do, I can do, all things through love. I know Philippians 4.13 essentially says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but Christ is love. Christ is me and your proof, believer, that God loves us. He is the picture of love. Jesus Christ is. So, number one, we need to explore the children of Israel just for a little bit because we need to, we need to really, really briefly mention, you know, what, what was really the problem here with the children of Israel, right? Okay. So, um, talk about children of Israel and we know that they did not enter the promised land. And you can go back and, and read this. Um, the account of them initially, um, the account of the spies going to, to view, um, the land and coming back and the people are like, uh, we don't want to do that. It's spies in that land. And, you know, just really giving God a hard time. The account of that originally, I believe is in numbers. Um, somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm almost certain it's in numbers, but, um, yeah. So, you know, the God makes them a promise. First of all, he brings them out of captivity. Okay. He brings them out of captivity he uh, guides them by fire and night. He rains down quail from heaven. He strikes water from, or he makes water come from a rock. He does all of these miracles. They were not a people that were unfamiliar with God. He did all these miracles, right? And when it comes to inhabiting the promise, okay, um, they send out some people to go look at the land and come back and the report is bad. And the report is these people are big. Yeah, God said we can have that land, but that the people over there are big. So now they start to complain against God and they're like, God, you're a joke. So basically you let, you, you led us out of captivity and slavery to be killed and slaughtered by these giants. Then you're going to dangle this promised land in our face with the milk and the honey and all of that. You're going to dangle it in our face for us to run up in there and be like trampled. So, oh, so you, um, you, you, you playing games out here, God, basically is what the, um, Hey, Pastor Kendra. Hello. Um, it's my pastor y'all. Um, so basically you led us out here, uh, to, to, to die. Thanks a lot, God. You're great. I mean, they did all these, this complaining to God. They did all of these things, right? They complained, they mumbled, they were, dis they were all of these things to God. And God had made them a promise. Like he told them, you're going to go in. He didn't, this wasn't no, this wasn't a fly by night promise. He told you, you're going to go in, you're going to possess the land. He gave them, he even told them where to go. And how. he did all of these things. And they looked at their current circumstances and were like, we can't do this. So we know, we know that story, you and I. Um, but what, why, why did they not go into that land? Why? What is the underlining issue there that they did not go forth to obtain that promise from Almighty God, the same God that had watched out for them this entire time? What, what was the issue? The underlining issue there was that they based the validity of God's promise against their current circumstance. It's what they did. Again, they based the validity of God's promise 
against their current circumstance, meaning they base whether God's promise was valid or not on what they could see. Okay, well, well why did they do that? I'm going to tell you why. Because they then base the validity of God's promise, his word, his love, and they made that or base that upon what they were currently going through, what they could currently see. So they, they challenged the love of God. They challenged the word of God because or based off of what they could currently see. Remember the prophetic word that I just read. The prophetic word that I just read that the Lord stopped my devotion. Again, I was sitting with him trying to get my life together. And he said, I need you to tell the people this. He says in this prophetic word, if you are struggling in this season, you need to re-examine my love. Okay? If you are not propelling in the promises, you need to reflect on my love. Before that, in this prophetic word, he said, my people need to know that I'm a covenant-keeping God. I keep my promises. My promises are backed by my word. My word is held together by my love. My word never fails because my love never fails. My love can never fail. That's why my word can never fail. So these things about God that he cannot lie and all those things, yeah, those things are true, but there is a reason why those things are true. There's the reason why those things are true because his love for us is solid, it's intact, it's unfailing. That's why his word is never failing. Because his word is never failing, his covenant never fails. So his covenant can never fail because his word can never fail because his love never fails. His love for us is the underlining reason why all of those other things are able to remain constant and unchanging. He is love. He is a God of love. And love is the reason why he blessed us when he first made us. And by us, I mean mankind. We had, we didn't even, we hadn't done anything yet. We hadn't done anything deserving of God's love yet. But the moment that we were formed, the very next thing that he did was blessed us. We believer, new covenant believers, we um, our picture of love is Christ Jesus, that when we were still sinning against God, when we had not performed anything worthy um, of God's love, that Christ made a decision to go to the cross, to stay at the cross. To, I mean, he could have said, okay, that's it. Get these nails out. I'm done. All right. That's enough. I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. So I'm done. Mankind, yon, yon. I'm going back to heaven because this is, this is, this is some, some whackness down here. Y'all going to hang me on the cross for y'all and y'all accuse me. You accuse my father. He, you, 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 um, you disrespected his temple. You're doing all these things and you want me to stay up here? No, I'm good. He could have did all those things. But his love for us, God being love, Christ being the picture of that love is the reason why you you and I can believe in the love of God. So what we're talking about today is you can do all things through love because God loves us. You are empowered to do all things. So again, back to the prophetic word, if you're struggling, then we need to check our love. Um, Mother's Day, right? I, you know, you all hear me talk about my, my mom um, a lot, a ton, of tons. I love her. She's a great mom, the greatest mom ever. But, um, <clears throat> you know, when it came to, to things that I wanted, I'm just using Christmas time, okay? I always use the example of Christmas. When it came to things that I wanted, my mother had me make my Christmas list very, very, very early in the year. I'm 38. I've been making Christmas lists, I think, since I could write. I, I've been making Christmas lists a long time, okay? I still make Christmas lists, okay? Still, but this time I use my phone, text message. But um, I've been making Christmas lists for a long time. And she, when I handed her my Christmas list, here you go, mom. I knew not to be, I knew not to have to go back and, and backpedal with her um, in September. Mom, you got my list, right? In October, mom, where my list at? You had it on the refrigerator, but then it, you took it down. What a list at? November, mom, you got my list. It's almost Christmas. You got my list, right? Chris, uh, December, mother, you got my list. We good. I didn't. First of all, I knew not to do that. But number two, I didn't have to do that because I believe that my mom was valid. 
I believe that her word was valid. Her promise was valid. She had proven herself time and time and time and time again. Every single day of my life, she proved herself to be a great mom and to be a mom that loves me unconditionally. I didn't have to question her word or the validity of her word because I didn't question her. I did not question her love for me. Even now, 38 and married, if me and Jeff need something, I know we can pick up the phone and call my mom. Now we don't, we handle it, but I'm saying she, her love for us, even being grown and married is still unquestionable and undeniable to this day. So when we got our house and she said, okay, I'm going to help you with this. I'm going to help you with this. What else do you need? I'm going to help you with this. When she let, and we didn't ask her when she just stepped up to the plate and wanted to lavish us with things for our home. I didn't have to check back with her on that. Mom, you, you, you still going to do you got that? Mom, we can, you still gonna get that to us, right? No, 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 no. Her, the validity of my mother's word is not questionable for me because her love for me is not questionable. So going back to the children of Israel, they challenge the love of God because the underlining issue here is them challenging the love of God because they challenge the validity of God. They challenge the validity of God and who and his character and his integrity. Why did they do that? Well, had they known what they were really then doing was challenging whether he loved them or not. The I look, the word doesn't explicitly, you know, word verbatim say they didn't enter into the promised land because they didn't believe God loved them. I looked, okay? Um but the promises that he made them when he talked to them in Deuteronomy and saying, you should love the Lord thy God. When he talked to them in numbers and he said, um, it's my unfailing love for you. He talks of, he, the Lord talks about love in the, in the old covenant. He talks about love. He talks about his unfailing love for them. He talks about them loving him. He talks about love. So when we're talking about them believing the love of God, they had examples. They didn't have Christ, but they still had examples that God loved them and that God had their best interest in heart. I mean, he led them out of slavery. And when they complained about um, no food and no water, he brought water, he brought quail, he brought whatever they needed, and they still challenged his validity, meaning they challenged whether he was valid. Meaning they then challenged his word. If you, if you challenge the integrity of somebody and the character of somebody, then their word is questionable. You don't care what they say. Because I don't believe your character. Your character is shaky for me. So I don't even really know if I believe what you are saying. If you know me, you know that um, when it comes to a, a correction or a word from, from my pastor, from my spiritual mom, or from um, E.P. Shonda, uh, you know, and I don't, I don't have a lot of playing room with that. The reason being is because, and I, I don't, I don't have a lot of playing room with that. I don't have a lot of gray area with that. Even if it's something I don't want to hear there, I don't have a lot of, to, a lot of give and pull with them on that because I trust them as women of God. I trust the Holy Spirit in them. I see the fruit of their lives. So the validity of them, whether they're valid or not, is not a question for me. But also, I am fully convinced that these are women that have my best interest at heart, that love me. So they're not going to tell me anything that debt for, for my, for my, that damages me. So I don't question their love for me, which makes me not question their word or their correction for me. So that makes me not question them as a person. You see where I'm going with this? So when we talk about you can do all things through love, that is you can do all things through constantly remembering that, that God loves you and that if he's made you a promise, is solid his promise is solid his word is solid because he's solid and because his love for you is solid and if that's been an issue for you again going back to the prophetic word if you are struggling with the promises then you need to re-examine his love for you you need to and myself need to get fully convinced that god loves us um because again i'm talking to myself being transparent i have i'm been feeling like I've been struggling all year. We're in the, what, the fifth month? All year. And I have visions from God. I have promises. I have all these things. But it seems like 
I'm groveling trying to get there. It seems like it's tortoise movement when I know it, it shouldn't be, not in everything, right? And some things, you know, they take a while because you're building something. Anything worth building um, is worth working, right? So some things take a little minute than others, but I've been feeling like, I'm barely getting there. And what he's saying is, you need to re-examine my love for you. Because if you were fully convinced of my love and my love is solid, then that wouldn't be an issue. So you can do all things through love. Through constantly remembering God loves you. He is not playing with your life. He is not, his promises are not fickle. His promises are not, you know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. His promises are solid. His love is solid. Amen. Amen. So then really quickly, now that we've gotten that, and another funny thing that he brought to my remembrance is we will be quick. We are quick to judge the children of Israel, right? Like, oh, they were dumb. How could they do that? Who would do that? Who would question a God that rained down quail from heaven? Who would, or manna from heaven? Who would um, question a God that gave quail? Who would question a God that was appearing to them in the by fire in the nighttime? That led them, that parted the Red Sea? Who would question a God? Who would do that? They were still, who would question a God like that? Me and you, we would. Yep, we do it all. We do it all the time. Um, the same God that we read about that part of the Red Sea is the same God that when we get a promise for, from him, we will be slow and moving because we be, because um, of our current circumstances, which again, the underlining issue of that is when you allow your current circumstance to affect um, you moving in the promises of God. The underlining the underlining issue there is you need to reexamine his love for you. You need to re-examine his love for you. And if you believe his work, his love is solid. His love is solid. We have 66 books that say so. His love is solid. We, we have an example. His love is solid. But you and I will challenge the validity of a word or a promise just because the current circumstances don't look like they need to look. The underlying issue for that, my brother and my sister, is his love. Again, in this prophetic word, he says it seems simple. To us, it seems simple. I do believe God loves me. I do believe God loves me. What are you talking I know God loves me. Sure. I'm not saying that you don't know that God loves you, but do you believe that God loves you? And are you experiencing that love, said love? Because it says in, in 1 John that you should, right? So I, I'm not saying that you don't know that he loves you. I'm saying, do, do we believe that he loves us? And are we experiencing what we believe on a regular basis? Because us experiencing that is what's going to get us to the other side. But we got to give him some room. We got to give him something to work with. So very quickly. Let's explore or examine the love of Christ, okay? So let's go to John 15 first. <clears throat> and if you're not in a position to look these up, that's okay. Just make note of them and then go back and read them. Um, these are great scriptures to keep in your arsenal. You've heard me talk about an arsenal, right? About how I have a little arsenal somewhere, always, nearby. I'm in my, I'm in my office right now, right? So in my little drawer here... I have an arsenal of things that I need to know on a regular basis. Um, I need to know about um, my finances. I need to know about the love of God. I have scriptures. <laughs> I have scriptures that I look at. I mean, I just, I have an arsenal everywhere, right? An arsenal of word, weaponry of word, of God's word, that I can get to at any given moment um, to, 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 to keep me in constant remembrance of, of, of the Lord, right? And, and what he's placed me here to do. So, um, these are good scriptures to keep in your arsenal, um, uh, scriptures about love. Amen. Amen. So first John, I'm not first John, sorry, big John. So that's in the gospels, John, uh, 15 verses nine through 13. And it reads this, I have loved you even as the father has loved me. This is Jesus talking. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Ooh. 
I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. You've told me what that, what now? I've told you all of these things, right? I've told you all of these things right here so that you will be filled with my joy. Your, yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Amen. Okay. That's John 15. Let's also go to Romans 5 and verse 8. Again, if you can't look them up, that's okay. Just make a, a note to go back and read them and then put a few of these in your arsenal, okay? So Romans 5 and 8 says, wait a minute. Yes, Romans 5 and 8, sorry. So, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Again, the scripture today, the, the, the big scripture today is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. The title of today's message is you can do all things through love. Because sometimes, maybe, we have separated that scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, from the fact that Christ, Jesus Christ, is our picture of God's love. That's our proof of God's love. And it says it right here in Romans 5 and 8. That, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us when we were still sinners. We did nothing to deserve for Christ to come and give his, give his life for us. We didn't do anything. The Lord looked upon us and said, we need a savior. We needed a permanent atonement for sin so that our, so that we would then not be defined by sinning, but that we would be defined by being God's righteous. And because we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, now it is him demonstrating his love for us that allows us to be a success here, right? It allows us to overcome. So that's Romans um, 5 and 8. Now let's jump over to 1 John 4, 16 through 18. 1 John 4, if you didn't know, let me tell you. 1 John 4 is just the bomb anyway. It's just the bomb. Um, at some point, I made a purpose of reading 1 John 4, at least is at least is Lord, at least verses 7 through, um, 7 through, what do I have highlighted here? 17, and you can maybe see the highlights I have here. But just making um, um, it a habit to constantly be reminded of the love of God. Amen? Amen. So 1 John uh, 4, verses 16 through 18 say this. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives within, lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfectly. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Let me read that in the message translation, y'all. Message translation of 1 John 4, 16 through 18 says, God is love. When we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house. What? This way, love has the run of the house. Becomes at home and mature in us so that we're free of worry on judgment day. Our standing in the world is identical with Christ. There is no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fearful of death, fear of judgment is not one yet fully formed by love. So, God makes the children of Israel a promise they send some spies over there. They come back. Everybody's scared. And they spread and they spread this report of fear through everybody. Now everybody's grumbling and, and griping and, and complaining because they're like, God, why would you bring us out here to do what? Like, why, why would you do that? Well, <clears throat> First John 4 says right here, there's no room for fear in love. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fearful of death, 
fearful of judgment is one not yet fully formed in love. Now, as a believer, when we're talking about being fully formed in love, that's a three chord love. Okay. That's a three level love. Number one, you need to be convinced. Number one, Number one, before you go out here trying to love and give love to everybody, because our love is raggedy. Our definition of love is raggedy. We, you, you, you just is, okay? So before we do all of that, you having a revelation of God loving you unconditionally and the reason why you are able to love unconditionally is because of his love. That's your first revelation. God loving you, okay? That, and that's what we're talking about today. You being able to, as God said, in, as he said in this prophetic word, you being able to propel in his promises by being perfected and being made perfect by his love. Okay. So you having a revelation that God loves you, then you choosing to love God and you love God when you obey his commandments. It says it all, it uh, says all up in the Bible. You, you love him or you show you love him because you obey his commandments. Now, why do you think? He would say, you love me when you obey my commands. Why do you think he would say that? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because you show your love to God by your belief in him, believing in him, believing that he loves you, believing that he's a good God, believing that these promises that he gave you, you are empowered to walk in. So he needs you to show his love for him by obeying his commandments because when you obey his commandments you believe him if you believe in god you believe in his character if you believe in his character you believe in his integrity if you believe in his integrity you believe that he loves you you may not make that trans that 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 um that, that connection right now i'm telling you that's the connection the connection is when you obey god's commandments you are choosing to believe in his integrity and in his character and him being a good God. And you're able to believe in all of those things because your love, because you believe his love for you is solid. Just like I told you about my mom's love for me, never questionable, always solid. It's been, it's, she's been proven to be solid 38 years. Her love for me is not solid. And that is why her word for me is intact. That's why if she says to me something, I'm like, mm, I take it into consider I take that into consideration because I believe in her. I believe on her. Amen. Amen. So <clears throat> you, so again, three level love. You have a relation, you have a, a revelation that God loves you. You making a decision to love God, and then you making a decision to demonstrate that unfailing love out to your fellow man. Okay. So when we're talking about your love being made perfect. That's the type of love we're talking about. Amen. Amen. So again, you can do all things through love. So we're exploring what the word says about God's love. So now that we've explored that, okay, now that we've explored his love, um, his love for us, now that we've placed our eyes on love scriptures. Okay. So then what do we do? Okay. God loves me. Okay. I got to get a revelation of God loves me. I can do that. But in the meantime, before walking into the promised land, what, what, what do I do? Okay, let's talk about it. Let's go to Romans 4 and 16. So we're going to go back to Romans. I only have a couple of more scriptures here and then we're going to wrap it on up. Um, so Romans 4 and 16 says, so the promise is received by faith. Let's, let's stop there. Because what does Galatians 5, 6 say about faith? Faith works by love. Okay? So, Romans 4.16 says the promise is received by faith. And Galatians says that faith is made active and works by love. And we just talked about love is three levels for a believer. Okay? All right. Just wanted to, to put that out there. Continuing on. Uh, Romans 4.16, it, it is given as a free gift. And we are all certain to receive it. <clears throat> Let's jump down to verse... Let's jump down to verse 17. Okay. So that is what the scripture means when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations, talking about the promise that was made to Abraham. 
This happened because Abraham believed in God who brings the dead back to life and creates new things out of nothing. Originally, that's your um, calling those things that be not as though they are scripture. Okay. All right. Verse 18. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God said to him, that is how many descendants you will have. All right. We're going to jump down to verse 20. Romans 4 verse 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith, because his faith works by love, okay, and he believed God, grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Abraham was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Why was Abraham Abraham convinced that God could do whatever he promises? Because he believed God. Well, why did he believe God? What, what, why did he believe God? Because Abraham had a covenant with God. Well, why, how did, why did God make that covenant with Abraham? Because God loved Abraham just like God loves me and you. Makes a covenant with, him, with us because he loves us. He loves us. And... We don't have to question the covenant that we have with God. It's like Abraham didn't have to question the covenant that he had with him because we don't have to question the love God has for us. What type of, what type of parent would promise you something, would promise you something and then make it hard for you to get it? What type of parent would promise you something and then put, and then, and then not empower you to do those things? When I was going off to college, um, number one, my mom, you know, had a talk with me and she was like, I know everybody is not, I know everyone is not made for college. So if college is not the route you want to take, that's cool, but you're going to do something. So if, if that's not what you're doing, what, what you're doing. So my, my, I wanted to go to college. Um, I had dreams about going to college. And so my mom was like, wherever you want to go, we're going to get you there. Right. So she had made me the promise that I could go to college. And once I decided I'm going to college, she made the promise that I was going to college and then did what she had to do. And, and I'm, as an adult, I'm just now finding out like how hard it was for her to, 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 to do that. But then doing what she had to do to make sure I stayed in college, right? To make sure tuition paid, okay? And to make sure that I graduated, right? What, what, so what parent makes a promise and doesn't empower you to, to, to get there? Now, she couldn't go to my classes for me. She couldn't study for me. She couldn't graduate for me. But she could give me the tools and empower me to get there and to do what I needed to do. And I never questioned her. Why? Because her word for me, you can go to whatever college you want to go to, we getting you there, was solid. Why was the word solid? Because I never questioned her love for me. Her love for me was solid. So I'm hoping you all are making the connection that if we are struggling in obtaining the promise, there's a lot of things to examine. Examine your faith. Examine your hope. Exam examine your corresponding action. Examine your belief, you know, exact all of those things. You, there's a lot of things that you can examine. There's a lot of things that, that need that, that, that enables us to get to where we need to go. But even, even under all of that, even under all of that, do you believe God loves you unconditionally to the point that it translates into you knowing that you can do all things no matter what the current circumstance looks like so what they're giants there who cares he made you a promise and if you believe his promise and if his promise is valid to you right if his promise is valid to you then that means for you god is valid then that means his character is valid his integrity is valid. So then that believes his that means that his love for you is valid. So I hope that today you made the connection, right? You made the connection between the promises and where you are now. And that if you're struggling to get there, if you're struggling to stay on it, listen, don't give no shame, no condemnation. During prayer today, the Lord said to us, let this be the last Mother's Day 
of guilt, shame, regret, and condemnation for the mothers and those that had mothers, everybody. Let this be the last day that you entertain guilt, shame, and condemnation. Let the love of God propel you in his promises. So, okay, okay, Tomasa, cool, fine. I need to believe the love of God. Got it, all right? Faith works by love, and faith is how I obtain the promise. So, okay, cool. So, but I'm still here. I'm still here, and the giants are still over there. So now what? Well, what are we? What are we doing? I got you. Last two scriptures, Hebrews ten and thirty six says. Read them quickly. Patient endurance is what you need now, so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that was promised. Okay, Hebrews six and fifteen says. Then Abraham waited, what, patiently, and he received what God was promised. All right. Lastly, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. That's our last scripture for today. Um, Romans chapter 5, I got to find it first. Verses 1 through 5 says this. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's, in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord has done for us because of our faith, Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege. We now stand confidently and joyfully looking forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems for we know that they help us develop endurance. What do we just read about? Patient endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because we have been given his Holy Spirit to fill our lives with his love. Why? Wait. What? Why do we not have to be disappointed while, while we're waiting before we get to the, to the promised land? Even though there's giants over there. Why do we not have to be disappointed? Because we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us his Holy Spirit to fill us with his love. And I'm done. Drop the mic. I'm done. I'm done. It's love. You having an issue, walking in the promises, propelling in the promises. The Lord's, um, the Lord's ver verbiage today was you have a problem in propelling in the promises. You know what that tells me? That tells me we're experiencing them a little bit here, a little bit there, but we're not propelling. That was his verbiage today. If you're not propelling in the promises, you need to re-examine my love for you. You, When you have the revelation that I love you, then your hope and your confidence for me is solid. So when I tell you to do something, when I tell you to go somewhere, when I tell you to conquer something, when I tell you to obtain something, you don't question me. You don't question me no matter how hard it looks. You don't question me no matter what the circumstances seem like. You don't question me no matter whether you can see the promise or not. I made you a promise. So if your love for me, if you believe the love that I have, have for you, thus saith the Lord, then when I tell you something, your confidence in me, your hope in me remains solid because your love is solid. Then me and you, thus saith the Lord, don't have to do this back and forth every other day about this promise because you're not questioning the validity of the promise because you don't question the validity of me because thus saith the Lord, if I'm valid to you, then my promises are valid to you. And if my promises are valid to you, what you're telling me then is that you have confidence in me and that you have hope in me. And if you're telling me that you're confident in me and that you have hope in me because you have made my promises valid to you, then what you're telling me is that you believe that I love you and that's what I need from you. I need you to always constantly believe that I love you no matter what the enemy is tricking you with, no matter what the enemy is bringing against you. I'm seeing people, I'm seeing mothers that you're, you've been praying for your children and the word seems to not manifest. What the Lord is saying to you today is stop 
questioning whether I love you or not. If you would do that, then you would propel in my promises for your children. Then your children will start propelling in my promises for them, but they can't because the parent is questioning the validity of my love. When you question the validity of my love, then you will question my promises and your question or your teeter tottering with my promises will always keep you from walking, propelling in my promises. Start believing that I love you and make it final. Put a stamp on it. Put a stamp on God's love for you. And I promise you, I promise you, I am preaching to my own self because as I'm telling you all to believe the love of God, I'm realizing I don't believe in the love of God. And that's why I've been struggling because I have, as, as first John four says, I have not allowed the love of God to be perfected in my life every single day. If I did, then these giants that I encounter on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or whatever, they would be nothing to me because I would know that the creator of heaven, heaven and earth before I ever did anything for him to love me, loves me. He loves me. And if I can believe for 38 years that when I hand peaches a Christmas list, my Lord, for 38 years, when I hand my mother a Christmas list and she says, I got you. <laughs> if I've never questioned her, if, I've, if the love of my mother has never been questionable for me, if the validity of my mom's word has never been questionable for me, surely I can believe in the love of God who made myself and my mom, who created the heavens and the earth, who has galaxies and nebulas I've never seen before, who is not a man that he shall lie, if I can believe in my mom, surely I can believe in the creator of her, the creator of me. Surely I can believe in God. Surely I can consistently always believe that God loves me and never, never, never bring it up for question. And whether I verbally bring it up for question or not, me propelling in the promises, according to this prophetic word, me propelling in the promises is a fruit of whether I believe God loves me or not. Just like the children of Israel choosing not to walk into the promised land was fruit of them not believing that God loved them. Amen. Amen. So grab your communion. Grab your communion. I'm sorry I should have told you grab your elements before. But grab your communion and um, we're going to go to God in prayer. So Lord, we, we bless you. We thank you for the broken body of Christ. The broken body of Christ that was filled with the love of God. That, that went to the cross for us. It was God's love for us that sent him to the cross. Made him stay at the cross. Because he had me in mind. He had you in mind. He had all of us in mind. When he bared the, the, the horrific, unimaginable events of the cross. From the time that he was beaten to the time that he, that he died. It was his love that kept him there. It was his love that kept him from quitting. It was his love for us that kept him from quitting. It was his love for the father to remain obedient that kept him from quitting. So as we partake in the body, the broken body of Christ, we remember his love for us. And because we, we make a choice to not question his love for us, we are making a choice to walk in the promises of God that is healing and wholeness for our entire bodies. It's, it's eternal life, it's salvation, it is peace of mind, it is prosperity, it is wealth, it is whatever it is that we are in need of. As we partake of the broken body, we remember the love of God. Take and eat. All right. <clears throat>
also, we lift up the, the blood of Jesus shed for us on Calvary's tree. We take it and we drink it. It is the blood of the new covenant. Because of the blood, we are heirs to the promises of God, which means we can boldly walk in the promises of God. Take and drink. And those of you who have communion cup and crackers, you might be saying, Tomasa, you ate a chip and drank from a bottle of water. Well, listen, I'm out of communion, okay? Right? Don't you judge me. I love God. Um, and and um, the word of God said, more importantly, the word of God says, as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of him. Amen? Amen. So if you haven't received... The Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and um, as your Lord and Savior. Um, today is a good day to do so. Listen, Christ died for you um, because he loved you. And when you receive him as your Savior, you are choosing to believe in the love of God. It's number one, choosing to believe in the love of God, but you're also choosing to be filled with his love. So then you experience the love of God. Amen. First John four, we're not, we're not just to know the love of God. We're to believe the love of God. We are to experience the love of God. Amen. Amen. So if you um, have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your, as your personal Lord and Savior, repeat after me. Uh, Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, then I will be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead and I renounce any of my past life and close the door. And believe and choose, excuse me, to believe in you. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me of my sin. Jesus, you are my Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I am now a new creature in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that simple prayer, again, he said in the prophetic word today, it seems simple, but who's really wise? If you've prayed that simple prayer on today, you are saved Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Amen. So <clears throat> again, thank you for spending a, a few moments of your mother's day with Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. Please remember um, to join E.P. Shonda and uh, Shonda Tucker and Al Tucker for Monday morning prayer, which I think is still tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. I'm sure it's still tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Please um, start your week off right. Log on to Facebook Live this page, 7.30 a.m. with E.P. Shonda um, Tucker and Al Tucker as they pray for you and lead you into having a successful, blessed week. Again, my name is uh, Minister Tomasa Easley. Thank you for spending uh, Mother's Day with Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. And in the words of my wonderful pastors, faith living is good living. Amen. Love y'all. Bye.